What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and today I'm back with another video to update you on the goings on of my current spring cycle. I'm probably gonna shoot this in like a little mini series. So this, you know, if you're, if you're seeing part one in the title, the reason is because I've got so much to cover that if I try to do it in one video, it's probably just gonna be scattered like all to hell. So I'm gonna try to bring you into the world that I've been existing in for the past couple of weeks. I think the last video that I released, uh, I was just getting over an illness and I was experiencing what I thought was withdrawal symptoms from trying to uh, switch from taking Ambien to sleep to a drug called Sonata for sleep. So quick recap on that. I've been on Ambien for over two decades. I take 10 milligrams a day and I found out that Ambien is, uh, is uh, you, you develop a dependence for it. And if you stop taking it, it can prevent you from sleeping and you can have some really excruciating withdrawal symptoms. I thought that that was what, is I, what I experienced uh, that I mentioned in my previous video where I said that I took uh, Sonata instead of my Ambien to sleep and then I was up all night feeling absolutely miserable. And I went into the side effects of that. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check out. I'll link it or it'll probably be at the end of this video. So my wife was really, you know, the one that kind of looked into it. We both felt like what I was experiencing was, was withdrawal from Ambien. The thing that I think neither of us really could understand was how I would be withdrawing uh, from Ambien with really within a 24 hour period. Um, I mean, I guess it's, it's possible, but, um, Nevertheless, what I did was the following night after having the miserable up all night, strung out, cracked out feeling that I got from taking the Sonata by itself, I went back to the Ambien. I made sure I got a good night's sleep. I took, an, took 10 milligrams of Ambien and I slept and woke up the next day and everything was much better. If I remember correctly, I may have taken Ambien the following night, I'm not certain, but within a day or two of getting back on my sleep schedule and fearing that I was gonna run out of my Ambien before I could refill my prescription, I decided to give the Sonata a try again, but this time to try to prevent what I perceived as withdrawal, I took five milligrams of Ambien and let that start kicking in in my system, make sure that I could feel it, you know, the, 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 you know, it's, the thing with the Ambien is it's, it's not a sedative, right? So it just kind of puts you in sort of a hypnotic state and that's supposed to quiet the thinking and make it a little bit easier for you to go to sleep. With, the, uh, with all of the steroids that I've been running and all the shit that's been going on in my personal life, the 10 milligrams is not enough. And so that's why I was trying to figure out how to you know, use something else that I could use at a higher dose that I had easy access to. And Sonata just happened to be the only sleeping pill that I have a pipeline for. So I took five milligrams of Ambien and then I took 10 milligrams of Sonata. Uh, now, obviously that's not an ideal circumstance, uh, but I checked that there's no interactions, there's no reason you can't take them together. Um, and I had not taken any Ambien the previous time that I tried to use the Sonata alone. So I took five milligrams of Ambien and I let that kick in for about 20, 30 minutes and I could kind of feel the effects coming on. I was feeling a bit more relaxed and I'm just kind of, you know, I was researching a, a set of headphones. I bought some Sony MDR, uh, there's Sony MDR 1ZRs, I think, uh, like audiophile high-end headphones. So I've been doing a bunch of research on that. And I was sitting on my phone just chilling, researching different reviews and looking at tonal curves and all this shit. And then I popped the Sonata. And within, I don't know, 15 minutes, maybe 20, I don't really know exactly the time, I started to spin up. Like I was feeling like I was, you know, working toward being able to go to sleep when the ambient was in my system. And then when I kicked in, when the Sonata started kicking in, all of the familiar effects that I had had the night that I thought I was withdrawing from the Sonata started, I mean, from the ambient started happening again. So I started having visual disturbances. My mind was racing rather than, than, than in a relaxed, like dreamlike state. I got up, I went to the bathroom and I started experiencing panic. And I'm sure that I caused that because I started realizing like something is bad wrong here. And honestly, it just kicked in my fear response, like holy shit, 
I'm clearly having a paradoxical effect to this drug and I'm going to be up all night again. So my wife was already knocked out of sleep. I laid down in bed and I tried to like overcome it psychologically. I'm telling myself there's no way this is really happening. You know, I'm, I'm trying to argue my, my way around it. But the, the panic is rising. The, the, the negative feelings are continuing to in, intensify. Like I was having the, the visual disturbance. The best way I can, I can like um, describe it was almost like uh, white noise in my vision. Um, not like as bad as white noise, but that, that's sort of what it was like. It was like my vision had white noise in it, black and white flickering is kind of what, what I was experiencing. And I would be having that laying in the dark or with the lights on, like when I, went, when I got up to go to the bathroom. And so I, I just felt horrific. And I woke her up and I was like, babe, I, I, something's bad wrong here. I cannot sleep. I'm wired up again. And I don't know what to do, basically. Um, so... You know, we laid there and we talked for a little while. She tried to like make sure that it was not just panic. She kind of got me calmed down and, uh, and we're laying there and I'm just like, you know, I, I don't, I cannot be up all night again. Luckily, I have a little bit of Xanax on hand, which I'm going to make an entire video about. I had a prescription for it for a very long time. And so I had, uh, you know, I had some Xanax on hand and she's like, you know, like, you're already having panic. You, you cannot be up another night. Like, why don't you take a Xanax? And I'm like, yeah, fuck, why don't I take a Xanax? So I've got five milligrams of Ambien, 10 milligrams of Sonata. I'm having full-blown panic attacks. I can't sleep. I've got racing thoughts. I've got blurred vision or, or vision disturbances, some paranoia, just feeling all around fucking disgusting. And... It seemed like throwing another drug into the mix, it, you know, given all of the shit that I'm on was not ideal. But again, it's like when you're in that kind of state, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Like you're, you're going to do anything for some fucking relief. I was prepared to go to the hospital and I was like, okay, like, fuck, I'm going to take half a milligram of Xanax. If anything happens, obviously this is the list of shit you got to tell 911 when you call that I'm on. And, you know, fuck it, you know, like, let's take the Xanax and see what happens. So I took half a milligram of Xanax, which, of course, is a very fast acting drug. I would say within 10 minutes, I could feel the effects of the Xanax coming on. Within 15 minutes, uh, maybe 20, all of the panic had subsided. I was much more laid back. Uh, I was definitely still having the paradoxical effects of the, of the, uh, the uh, Sonata. But, and then we laid there for, God, I think we were up till 6.30 in the morning, a couple more hours um, talking and, you know, and just trying to like sort through all of the shit that I've been going through, all of the shit that I'm on. You know, I was feeling really down on myself for some reasons that I'll get into in the next video in the series. And it was really just sort of an ugly experience. There's just sort of like a, a spiral into, into um, intense negativity, you know, like, I've been on a lot of shit, and, and, and as you've seen from uh, some of these spirited videos that I've been making, you know, it, it, it's definitely not without, without some serious effects. And I, it's, like, it's like, on the one hand, I love making those trend rant videos. I love being on trend. I love everything about trend. I love everything that it provides. But at some point, you know, when you're, when you're alone with your own thoughts, you, you can't, if you, if, if you have any brains at all, you can't ignore the fact that clearly this shit is causing a lot of problems, you know? And so I started really asking myself, like, what is going on with you that you're willing to, that you're willing to put up with all this shit? And eventually, after God knows how long, I was able to get to sleep and I slept through the night and threw the fucking Sonata away. So basically, there you have it for part one of what is going to be a relatively interesting series of videos. For whatever reason, I have a paradoxical effect to Sonata. Um, a paradoxical effect basically just means that you have the opposite effect of what is expected. So I also happen to have a paradoxical effect to uh, Benadryl. If, if I take Benadryl, a lot of people can take Benadryl, uh, also known as diphenhydramine, and go to sleep, or it helps with their uh, histamine response. It's an antihistamine, right? So I cannot take Benadryl 
uh, I didn't. I discovered this well late in life. Uh, I used to take it. Uh, I used to take a a diphenhydramine pill that was designed as a sleep aid when I couldn't sleep at night and it would keep me up all night. I would start having fucking restless leg syndrome, the racing thoughts, the fucking cracked out feeling. If I take a Benadryl, basically it makes like one part of my brain feel tired, like I want to go to sleep, but I cannot sleep. I get really irritable. I just like feel like my there's something in my bones or joints that doesn't feel good. I'm constantly like trying to stretch my legs out or stretch my back out. It's just, it's just a totally horrible experience. And that's what they call a paradoxical effect. It is becoming very clear to me uh, over the last few months that I think I am actually the paradox. Uh, uh, I'm a hot fucking mess right now. And uh, it's likely only going to get worse when you find out the rest of what's been going on. So um, as of yesterday or two days ago, uh, I, I was filing for divorce against my wife and we were in the process of splitting up all of our property so that we could go our separate ways without killing one another. Um, that's not going to be an entire video because I'm happy to report that I think that we are going to be able to sidestep that for the time being. But it has been one hell of a roller coaster to say the least. So I think I'm gonna cut this video short here and then I'm gonna come back in the second video, possibly right after this, and talk a little bit more about the Xanax and the effect that that's having on me right now and what my next step is going to be in this trend cycle. So definitely stay tuned for that. I will try to get that out uh, this evening if possible. Like I said, I may shoot it right after this video. Uh, but rest assured, I have not been protecting the cycle as of late and have had some really, really bad days. So uh, hopefully this has been informative for some of you. Uh, is there anybody else in the audience that has a paradoxical effect to uh, Sonata, to Ambien, to Benadryl? Uh, I would love, it's, it's it, one of the things I love about this channel is I can come on here and I can talk about shit that I experience. And some people will be like, holy fuck, you're an idiot, what are you doing? And then other people will be like, man, that's crazy, bro. Like, I feel you. I've been exactly where you are. I've had the same kind of experiences. And while that can be a, a, a negative, you know, because like you get too many people like you saying, yeah, I do the same thing. And then all of a sudden you get, you get energized to go, you know, continue doing things that may not be good for you. But at a bare minimum, it's also always just fun. You know, it's comforting to know you're not alone. And, and when you see somebody echo or mirror your experience, it certainly gives some kind of peace of mind that, okay, you know, like I'm not like, like somebody else is there with me. So there you have it. Stay tuned for the next video and we'll see you on the next one.